What's going on guys? Welcome to the channel. I've done previous videos on my eBay tire machine, but I don't think I have a pretty good detailed, well, I'm gonna try my best to do a detailed tire install on low profile tires. So I've got a pretty good example for you guys today and it's a pricey example. So my buddy Darren, and I'll put his page right here and I'll insert a link to his uh, Instagram in the description down below. My buddy Darren, he's got a really nice right-hand drive Mark IV Supra, and maybe I'll put a picture right there as well. He needed rears, his rear end tires swapped out on his Supra, so here I am. I'm going to I'm gonna go ahead and do it for you. I'm not going to attempt it because I can do it because I've already done one tire just to prove to you guys that it does work. I'm going to go ahead and dismount that tire and take that off and uh, mount the new tire on. So let's see what he's got for new tires. Uh, he's actually got some pretty sweet tires. Now, excuse the mess in the shop. It's always going to be a mess. So no matter how much I try to clean it, it's always going to be a mess. Here we are. They are Toyo. I'm pretty sure these are the R88Rs. Toyo Proxies R88Rs. Yeah, Toyo Proxies R88Rs. Look at the tread on that boy. All right. Well, his car goes fast, so he needs, he needs some good rubber. One thing before I get started on this, it's actually pretty funny. He took this to several major tire stores in the area and they were all too scared to touch it. They dismounted that one, right? And they couldn't get the tire back on. So how do I say this nicely? I get a lot of hate comments on my other YouTube videos regarding the eBay tire machine. Some of, you know, a lot of them have deleted their own comments and stuff, but there's there's been quite a few hate comments saying that these tire machine and balancer are crap and they don't work for crap or and all that. And, and there's comments saying, I don't know what I'm doing. Listen, you get to, you, you can't learn stuff without, you know, trial and error. So like I said, you know, here I am, I'm in my backyard, in my shop, eBay tire machine, eBay balancer, and I'm, I'm mounting and balancing tires that major brand tire stores refuse to do because they, they didn't have the right equipment. Like, I don't have the helper arm on this. I don't, I don't get it. But anyways... That was just one thing I wanted to get out, get off my chest. So the first thing you want to do is when you get the tire is, or the wheel and tire is, uh, you want to go ahead and make sure that the new tires are the right size, right? Because you don't want to go ahead and dismount this tire and realize that you got the wrong size. So you want to make sure that you have the right rim diameter uh, and whatnot, and then go ahead and make sure you've got the right rim diameter on here. So these are 19s, and then I made sure that the proxies that he ordered R19s as well. The previous tire store already took these out, but what you want to do is you want to take the valve cores out and you're going to go ahead and use your valve core tool removal. And I'm going to go ahead and insert links to all the tools that I'm going to be using today in the description down below. Yeah, in your tire valve, you're going to have a Schrader valve and it looks like one of these boys right here. You're going to take your valve core removal tool, go ahead and insert it in your in your valve stem. And then once you grab, once you get a good grip of that valve core, you're going to go ahead, righty tighty, lefty loosey. So we're going lefty loosey. And then take it out and we're going to set this tool as, along with our valve core that's already removed uh, and put that aside. So we're going to go ahead and break the bead now. So to break the bead, let's go over to our bead breaker. So this car doesn't have TPMS, but we're going to treat it like it has TPMS for educational purposes. So if it has TPMS, you want to try to stay, you want to try to keep heavy machinery away from the general area of the valve stem. So what we're going to do to break the bead is gonna try to stay away from the valve stem. I'm gonna bring this over. Right. And then just kind of get it close to the rim, but you don't want to be up against the rim. And then we're gonna go ahead and break the bead. So the air is already deflated from this, valve core removed. Let's go ahead and... All right, that's fairly easy. You might get older tires and they might be a heckler to get off, but it wasn't too bad. I'll just do one more. Where's that? All right. So that was on there pretty good. Alright, 
So doing the back kind of pushed the, the front a little bit. So we're gonna go ahead and just try to loosen that up. Uh, with these specific wheels, uh, these are reverse mounted. And I'll show you guys how to tell if they're reverse mounted, probably with the tire off. But I just know they're reverse mounted because uh, Darren already told me that they're reverse mounted. Yeah, so what I mean by reverse mounted, that means that the face side of the wheel is going to be down on the turntable. So let's go ahead and open up the jaws. So I'm just gonna go ahead and try to feed the rim into like one or two of the jaws here. Just because it's such a low profile tire, you know, it's not as malleable. And then while we're doing that, I'm gonna go ahead and, with my hand, I'm gonna go ahead and compress the, 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 the lever to get the jaws back to close. I'm just gonna kind of feed the wheel into the jaws here. There we go, and we're gripped. All right, so now that the wheel is secure to the jaws and it is on the, the turntable, you're gonna notice that the sidewall already kind of came back up against the lip and that's fine. We already, as long as we broke the bead on the bead breaker, this should be somewhat easier to break off with a, with a, with a pry bar just to get the duck bill underneath it here. So we're gonna go ahead and secure this up against the, up against the lip here, lock it in place. And then on this side, you want to make sure, so if you guys can see how it looks, it's right up against the lip. And then make sure that that screw is right there. So that's locked in place. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take our, our pry bar, our tire pry bar, and we're going to try to get in. So we're going to go ahead and pry up against this part of the duck bill. We're going to use this as our leverage. So we want to get in, right? Uh, and then to make this easier on us, let's see if I can do this one-handedly. Here, let's use this, this end. Okay. So one thing that should help us. All right, since it's such a tight fit, we're gonna go ahead and try to give ourselves some leverage on this side. So now that we've brought this side down a little bit, we're gonna go ahead and try and get on this side. I wish there was a way that I could hold this in place. Okay, I don't know if you guys kind of saw what I did there, but let me kind of explain the physics behind this, right? So inside the wheel, this diameter that's right behind this lip is wider than the diameter that's in the center of the wheel. And I'll show you guys when we get to that point. So what we want to do is on this side, because we need more space over here to get that pry bar in and pry it over, on this side, what we want to do is we want to push the, the tire down towards the, the center or towards the, the circle of the rim where it's a smaller diameter. So that way this gets tucked in and I just kind of shoved a rag in here because I'm by myself today. So this shoved the sidewall down here and what that did was it gave us more space on this side and I was able to get the pry bar in here, pry up against the duckbill and bring the, the sidewall over the duckbill. 
move this out of the way. Now that this is above the duck bill, you can keep this in its place. It'll come out by itself. We're going to go ahead and spin it clockwise. I'm going to try to get... Now this, this might be really tight, so we're gonna go ahead and try to persuade it a little bit using the pry bar. There we go, it's moving. Just like that. If this was to have a TPMS sensor, right? When we first started, when we, when we went ahead and used the pry bar to get this out, usually you wanna keep your TPMS sensor in this area, so before the duck bill, right here. And what that does is, you know, we want to keep the sidewall from compressing up against the TPMS. So when, when we start by taking the tire off where the TPMS sensor is, that'll prevent us from crushing the TPMS sensor. So, and that's if it was like a front facing um, wheel mount, but we're reverse mounted today or yeah. All right guys, so now to take off the second part, the second sidewall uh, to get this tire dismounted, we're gonna go ahead and take our pry bar and right here, this lever is what we want to have the, the sidewall up against. So we're going to go ahead and slide it down, the lip of that sidewall right there. And we're using this part of the ductbill again for our, our pivot point or our leverage. Okay. So together, we're picking up the tire and our pry bar together. I don't know if you guys can see this, but you can see how the pry bar... Let's see. I don't know if you guys... Yeah, but yeah, the pry bar is up against that that sidewall lip. So we're gonna go ahead and pry over the duck bill. As you guys can see in here, we're over the duck bill, right? Now we're gonna go ahead and spin it clockwise again. There we go, just like that. So we're gonna go ahead and move this out of the way. Get our tire out of the way. Boom. All right, so let's talk about the wheel here and let's talk about rear mount versus your standard. So if you guys can see the wheel, right, you can see that the center has a smaller diameter than the two outer edges, right? So the reason we determined that this is a reverse mounted is because if you notice this area, this area is thinner than this one. Right, so like this, this whole thing. So can you imagine trying to pry the wheel down or the tire down all the way till the tire gets to this point to get that slack? That's why, you know, right here it's reverse mounted because when we come down with the pry bar, we're coming down here, right? And we're trying to pry that, that tire into this general area so that we can have slack on the opposite side. So the first thing I like to do, especially with like low profile tires or tires that like have a really snug fit is I want to take the wheel Obviously you want to make sure it's clean. This is a really clean wheel. If there was like a whole bunch of debris and stuff, like use brake clean to clean it. I don't know, just basically make it a clean surface. So we're going to go ahead and take our tire lube that we're going to use. And I'll, I'll, I'll put a link to all of the stuff that I'm using today in the description down below. So we're going to take our tire lube and I don't know, I like to do this. Uh, I'm basically trying to create a slick surface on all the areas where there's going to be really heavy friction, if that makes sense. So. Uh, anywhere where the tire could possibly like stick or like where the um, where the crowbar or the duck bill is going to rub up against I'm, I'm going to put lube on it just to make it I guess uh, less resistant to scratching and uh, easier for the tire to kind of form its, its, its way through the, the wheel if that makes sense right, so I'm just going to go ahead and put it in the general area of the lip basically in the general area of where the wider diameters are you don't want to use too much because then you'll throw off the balance of the, the wheel and tire and all that. So on this side as well, I'm going to go ahead and use some lube tires on my buddy's scat pack. And it was, they were so tight that the, that the bead didn't want to sit. I'm pretty sure we filled that tire up to like 95 PSI until the, until the, the, the bead actually, you know, landed in its spot. 
but yeah so this this is what will help with that it'll when the tire is like filling up it'll kind of slip up against the surface of the the wheel and kind of seat itself into the bead so what you want to do before you mount this thing is you want to make sure if it's directional which which side faces outward which side faces inward and so forth it says outside over here on this side and on if it says outside here that means it'll say inside here so what that means is that this is going to be facing outside the outside part of the vehicle and this side is going to be facing the the inside of the vehicle so we're going to go ahead and get a tire loop on here as well and we're going to go ahead and be generous with our tire loop so i've got my tire applicator or my tire lube applicator i'm going to go ahead and get tire lube on here get tire lube on here If you guys can see here, there's a yellow dot. Usually the yellow dot means it's the lowest point of, uh, it's the lowest point of, of weight on the tire. So when the tire was manufactured, uh, it was determined that this point of the tire is the lowest weight. So that's where you want to counterbalance it with the wheel. And you're going to mount the yellow dot as close as possible to the, the valve stem, right? So we're just going to kind of lean it like this, bring our duck bill over. All right, now we're gonna treat this as if it had TPMS, remember guys? You gotta try to remember that we're treating it that way. So if it has TPMS, we're always gonna leave the, the TPMS sensor at the what? Six, seven, eight, like around the eight o'clock or nine o'clock area. So uh, TPMS is in that area or the valve stem. So we're gonna go ahead and all you got to do is with it like this, right? I don't know if you guys can see that clearly. I'm sorry. We're just going to go ahead and spin it clockwise. So going under the duck bill. There we go. And we're on. So TPMS position, if this was front facing, would be this area again okay you guys can see that in that area so tpms is on this side or your valve stem is on this side uh you want to make sure that this sidewall is underneath the duck bill well at least for the front part of the duck bill but back here the tire is going to be above here so what we're going to do is before we spin this thing i'm going to come over here to our like right by the the valve stem area where, where that would be. We're gonna go ahead and try to give ourselves as much slack as possible, right? So I'm gonna try to pry the, pry the tire down so that when we go to spin and this starts getting tight, it's going to bring it down to the lower diameter of the wheel, all right? So we're gonna hold that in place, right? And then we're gonna take our, and then we're gonna take our second pry bar and you want to keep that underneath the duck bill. Right? Here, where's the other pry bar? Just want to get you guys out of the way here. All right, we're underneath the duck bill. And this side, we're giving ourselves slack. All right, so now that we're underneath the duck bill on this side, and on this side, we're going to be giving ourselves slack, we're going to go ahead and spin it clockwise. Just like that, we're mounted. Now, it sounded bad, but it's, it actually went great. We didn't, tear up the, we didn't tear up the lip of the sidewall. That's usually what happens, and you'll notice that when you, when you take tires to somebody who doesn't really know how to use a tire machine, and they try to force the heck out of it, they'll, you'll tear up, you'll tear up the, the lip, or you can scratch up the, the wheel, or the duck bill will come out flying. But we got the tire mounted. Looks great, Darren's gonna be happy. And then we're gonna go ahead and just clean off all this excess lube on here. I don't know if you guys can see this, but all the scratches that are over here are already previously there from before. So I didn't do that. But the lube kind of helped, you know, prevent any more scratches. All right guys, so I've got the wheel flipped just, uh, just for educational purposes. So we've got the yellow dot right here and we wanna get it as close as possible to the valve stem. Right, so our valve stem is right here. 
Now this might not, oh, that was actually fairly easy. And th this is where that lube kind of helps. Because if all that lube wasn't there, this, I wouldn't be able to be doing this right now. But usually when you first mount it, you want to make sure that that yellow dot is as close to possible to that valve stem. Just like that. Oh, I'm breathing hard, man. I'm getting a workout. So before we fill it up with air, we want to make sure that we're not locked into the jaws. Just like that. I'm going to go ahead and hook up our air to it. Now I'm going to turn on the compressor to fill up the air, but I'm just going to go ahead and fill it up to about 35 or 32 and then we can let Darren decide what his final pressure would be. Alright guys, so now we're, I filled it up to about 32 or 33 Europe. I'm just going to go ahead and put a little bit more air. So with the valve stem tool or the valve core tool, we're going to go ahead and take our valve core. We're going to feed it into the teeth just like that. Now some air is going to escape, but that's okay. And what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and and uh, spin it in the in the the valve stem. Just like that. All right, guys. And that is how you dismount and mount a low pro tire. Darren, if you see this, I hope you're happy, man. All right. All right, guys, so that pretty much wraps it up for this video. I'm probably going to do a balancing video for the next one, but I got to go run an errand and come back. If you guys have any questions uh, regarding the install or anything like that, go ahead and feel free to comment down below in the comment section. I'm going to go ahead and insert a link to all the tools that I used, including the tire machine, in the description down below. Go ahead, like, share, and subscribe to the channel. It motivates me to do more of this kind of content. I appreciate you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace out.